Bill Ebener here with videoschoolonline.com and another After Effects tutorial. I'm gonna show you how you can get the old film style look right with an After Effects. I'm gonna show you nine different ways that you can do this kind of effect and you'll be able to combine them to use them all to create your own unique old film style. Let's head into After Effects and learn how. All right, so I'm here in After Effects and we're going to be using this clip that I shot in downtown San Dimas. It was actually perfect timing. This old Ford car drove by. So it, except for these cars in the background and some of the modern conveniences in the background, this looks like the perfect clip to add this old film style to. So the steps we're going to be going over are here right now. So you have your black and white or sepia, which is your color effect. We're going to be adding some contrast, adding grain, scratches, dust, vignette, wiggle, and flicker. Both of these are great for that old sort of projection style. And then frame. And like I said in the intro, you're able to combine these different effects to create your own unique look. You might not want to use all of these, but I do want to show you how all of them combined can create a cool effect like this. All right, so I've created a new composition with this clip right here, which is just a regular video clip. Uh, it might be something that uh, you're working on your own. You can use your own clip. So go ahead and set that up. I'm also going to be showing you how to do this using adjustment layers, which is great because you can easily copy and paste adjustment layers such as I do here from this composition to this composition and it automatically applies all of these effects to the new clip. That being said, there's other ways you can apply these effects. You can apply them directly to the clip. You can combine all of these or most of these to a single adjustment layer to make it a lot easier. I just am going to do it on separate adjustment layers so that it's easy for you to understand. All right, so the first one we're going to do is changing the color to black and white or sepia. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer up here, going up to layer, new adjustment layer, or on a Mac, that would be option command Y. So we have this new layer. I'm going to rename it so we know we're going to call this color. So in our effects and presets, the easiest one would just be the hue saturation effect. So type in hue and under color correction, you have the hue saturation. I'm going to apply that to this layer right here. Quickly dropping the master saturation down would get you a black and white image. Or if you click the colorize and then we adjust the colorize hue to something like 32, 33 or so, somewhere right around 30 to 35, you get this cool sepia tone. You can increase or decrease the saturation of the colorize to make it more colorful. So that's kind of the first step to get this sort of effect. It already looks pretty good. So the next step is to add some contrast. So again, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. For me, that's Option Command Y on a PC. That would be Alt Control Y, I believe. So check me if I'm wrong. Comment in the <laughs> comments below if it's something else. So I'm going to call this Contrast. And the easiest way is with Brightness Contrast or the Curves effect. So I'm going to type in Curves and apply this Curves effect here. And then I'm just going to create a little contrast curve by bringing down the darks and up the highlights. And this is just something that is typical of old film. You get a little bit higher contrast, not as much dynamic range. You lose some of the information in the blacks and the highlights, but that looks pretty good. Cool, so that's the next step after this is to add some grain. So as always, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, rename this to grain so I know what I'm working with. And then in the effects and presets, you actually have an add grain effect. So if I drop that down here, now what you'll notice is that you don't see the grain automatically applied and that's because the viewing mode is set to preview, which means it's only set to this little box right here. We can move this box around. If you drop down the preview region and drag left or right, we can make it bigger by increasing the width and height of the preview region. Or you can just drop down this preview viewing mode up here and choose final output to see it on everything. Here you can adjust the size and intensity of your grain. There's all kinds of other things you can do with the animation speed, which adjust the sort of animation of the grain popping in and out, the blend mode, the color, I would say make it monochromatic because this is black and white. So definitely under color, check monochromatic 
For the intensity and size, you might want to increase this or decrease this according to your style, but I'll let you play around with that. But it's hard for you to see here on this video, but I'm sure if you're following along, if you turn on and off this effect, you can see that it actually is applying grain. Now, bear in mind, the more effects you add, the more intensive it's going to be for your computer to render and play it out. I'm previewing this at a third resolution so that I can actually play through this. Depending on your computer, you might not even be able to do that. Or maybe you can go up to full resolution and play through it. But the more effects you apply, the harder it's going to be. That being said, when you're done, you probably do want to render out and preview it at full quality to see what it actually looks. All right, so the next one is scratches. So scratches and dust, these are really cool effects that we're going to be adding next. So as always, Option Command Y to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to add scratches. So with scratches, I'm actually going to use the fractal noise effect. So under noise and grain, if you type in fractal, you get fractal noise. So drop this down onto our scratches layer. So the first thing you'll notice is that now it's this complete cloudy black and white image. So for now, that's totally fine so that we can see what we're doing, but eventually we're going to change the blend mode so that we can see the image behind. So first with the contrast, boost that contrast to something like 250 and then the brightness to negative 100. And that's just going to basically decrease the amount of scratches we're going to see. Now under the transform properties, we're going to adjust the scale. Right now we want to uncheck uniform scaling. And for the width, we're going to set to one and then to the height, we're going to increase. So for me, I'm going to increase it a lot, something like 5,000, between 5,000 and 10,000 is usually pretty good. All right, so now we have basically this line, this, this set of line right here. What we wanna do is actually animate this line. And one of the easiest ways you can do that is with an expression that you add to the evolution. So if I rotate this evolution, you can see that these dust, these scratches actually move, which is kind of cool. You get that scratch effect. You could set a keyframe and just rotate this and set another keyframe to animate it. Or you can actually add an expression to this to automatically basically adjust. So how you do that is by option clicking the stopwatch next to the evolution or alt clicking if you're on a PC. That opens up this effect with the expression editor down here in the timeline. So delete all of that or just type in times, times, <laughs> so time, times, it's the little asterisk button, 200. So that's going to automatically animate these scratches like so. The higher you go, the faster it's going to animate. So again, you can play around with what you like. Now, lastly, we want to change the blend mode so that we can see what's behind it. If you don't see this mode column, just click the toggle switches modes button here, switch the mode to add, and now we can see what's behind. You may want to decrease the opacity of this layer too. So press T to bring up opacity with this layer selected and drop that down to something like 50 or so or 25 if you want to have it blend even more. Cool, so now we want to add our next step, which is dust, which is going to be using the same sort of effect. So what we can actually do is just duplicate this layer by selecting it and pressing Command D on a PC, that would be Control D, and then rename, we'll call this dust, five dust. All right, so now what we basically have to change, let's turn it back to normal, the blend mode, and let's take the opacity up so we can see it. And now if we go da back down to transform properties and we change the height to uniform scaling, so it's at 100, now we have basically this dust. We still have the time evolution that's animating it, which is pretty cool, but we can also change how it looks. I think there's a little bit too much dust, so I'm actually going to decrease the brightness to something like negative 200 to see, oh, that was too much. Negative 150. If you just want a little bit of dust, that's pretty good. Maybe negative 125. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you can also, for this one, I would go into the time evolution settings again. 
And so if we drop down our dust menu, drop down our effects, fractal noise, drop down our evolution, we can get into this menu. I'm going to multiply this by 500 so that it's happening a little bit faster. I think that looks more like actual dust on, on old film. Okay, so now let's go back and change our blend mode to add. And then again, we can drop the overall opacity of this entire layer, pressing T, drop this down to something like 50, depending on how you like it. So that is, we're getting there. This is really awesome. A lot of cool things that you can do. Next, we're going to add a vignette. So for this one, we're actually going to not use an adjustment layer. We're going to use a new solid. So go up to layer, new, solid, or just pr press command Y or control Y and make sure it's black and select OK. To quickly create a vignette, go to the ellipse tool up here, which is your shape tool. Just hold and click ellipse and double click ellipse to get this perfect circle or ellipse for your composition. Next, we want to go to this mask setting underneath this layer and change from add to subtract. Or if you want, you can just leave it on add and choose inverted. While I'm down here, I'm going to rename this to vignette. Vignette. Cool, so now that's a very hard vignette. So let's play around with some of the mask settings. So if you drop down the mask settings, let's increase the feathering and also decrease the mask opacity, or you could just decrease the opacity of the overall um, mask layer or the vignette layer itself. You can also increase or decrease the expansion to make it sort of the center smaller or larger. So adding in a vignette like that also makes it a little more like old style film. Cool. So that is our vignette. So you can see as we go, we've added color, contrast, grain, scratches, dust, and now a vignette, which really takes it to that next level. So these next ones are really additional ones that take it to a, a really other level. And this is more for that projector style look. So first with wiggle. So we want to use this as an adjustment layer. So again, option command Y. And I'm going to call this wiggle. Okay, so what I actually want to do is wiggle the video beneath every, the actual video. And I'm not going to wiggle the vignette or anything beneath this. I just want to do it to the video itself. So I'm actually going to put wiggle right above our video layer down here. Now notice that what I want to do is actually change the position. And I want to move it back and forth, up and down really quickly. But if I do that here under the transform tools, nothing happens. And that's because the transform properties of this adjustment layer aren't affecting what's beneath it. What we need to do is add an effect that will then apply to what's beneath it. So there's actually a transform effect under distort that we can apply to the wiggle layer now. And now notice that if I move the layer, the position up here in the transform tools, left, right, up or down, it's applying to the video layer beneath it. So now we have this transform effect and what we want to do is animate the position. So we want to actually go in and we can do that with an expression because we don't want to again be animating it with keyframes by option clicking the position here, the stopwatch and the transform effect. Make sure you're not doing it to the position down here in the transform. If you are working in the timeline, make sure you go to the transform tool down here under effects and then option click position. Now type in a popular expression called wiggle. So wiggle, open parentheses, 25 comma 1.5, and then close that those parentheses. And what this says is that we're telling After Effects to wiggle this clip or anything underneath it, the position, 25 times a second one point by 1.5 pixels. So up, down, left, or right. So if I click off and then play through this, you'll see that now there's a little bit of jitter and wiggle to this clip. To make it extreme, if I make this just 5 instead of 1.5, you can see it even more. So you can play around. Maybe you want something like 2. That looks a little bit more natural to you. The thing you have to be careful about now, though, is if I turn off the transparency grid and I go through this, 
what I've actually done before, which I shouldn't have done, is the scale of this video clip is at 102. If the scale of your video is set to 100, what happens is as it wiggles, you might see some transparency to the left or right or the very top of this. So it's very hard for you to see. Let me change this to 10 so you can see as an extreme. Over here on the right hand side, see how the background now is just transparent. It wiggles around. And if you export this, the sides are going to be completely black, which is probably something that you don't want. So if you are doing something like two, for example, what you want to do to your video clip down below is increase the scale to like 102 or s something so that even though it's moving around, you're not getting any transparency around the edges. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but just uh, I wanted to just make sure that you knew about that in case you export and you're like wondering why the edges don't look good anymore. Cool, so that's the wiggle effect. And next we're going to add the sort of projector flicker. So we're going to add another adjustment layer. We're gonna also put this right above the video layer itself and not above everything else. I'll call this flicker. And this time we're going to animate the opacity. Again, we can't do it under the transform properties of this layer, so we have to add this effect. And then we're going to add an expression to this effect for opacity. So option, clicking the stopwatch under opacity. Again, we're using wiggle. So wiggle doesn't necessarily mean position. It just means sort of wiggle the, the number or the value of whatever setting you're using. So for example, if we do wiggle 25 times a second by, let's say, 90, what's going to happen is that the opacity is going to go up or down anywhere between 90 points or it's not pixels, but for uh, opacity, it's kind of like percentage, 25 times. So if I turn this transparency off, you can see what's happening. Now that's way too much. We don't want anything like that. So I'm going to drop the 90 down to something like 10. Still, that's kind of a lot. And maybe the wiggle is just a little bit too much. So let's go 10 and then 5. See what that looks like. And that's pretty good, maybe going up back up to 25.5. So you, again, see, you can play around with this to get your own sort of custom projection fil flicker using this wiggle effect. But just remember that the first number is the amount of times it's adjusting per second, and then the second number is the value that's changing. So we're ch changing by five. And you can see that with the opacity here, it's at 98, 100, 97. So it's only going to go down at maximum to 95. So if you want it to go down even more, that's when you would want to increase this value to something like 10. Okay. So this first is the speed. The second is the value. So that's our flicker. And then the last thing I'm going to do is this frame option. Now I created this cool sort of frame here with this edge using a brush stroke animation effect. So we're going to show you how to do that now. So first we want to, similar to what we did with the vignette, add a new solid layer. So for me, I'm just going to press command Y or go up to layer new solid. Black is fine. So this one I'm putting on top of all of these other layers and I have renamed it to frame. And now up with our shape tool, I'm changing from ellipse to rounded rectangle. And again, I'm going to double click this. So it creates this sort of rounded rectangle mask. I'm going to invert it so it's just the outside and I'm going to go down into our mask and drop the expansion to something like this. So we just have this border around. In your effects and presets, if you type in brush, under stylize, you have brush strokes. And I'm going to drop this onto this frame. So basically, this kind of creates this sort of scratchy, sort of looks like it could be a film frame or something around the edge. Now, it's not perfect though. If I click off this, you can see that it doesn't go completely to the edge. So what you might want to do is with the actual shape of the layer itself or with the mask, just play around with the scale. So under the transform tools, I might unlock the uh, constraint proportions for scale and increase the Y property of the scale so that we don't have as much the top and bottom frame, but we do have the left and right frame. And then maybe just 
increase the left and right just a little bit. You can also adjust the style of the brush, increasing the brush size here, decreasing the brush size, the stroke length to increase or decrease the size of this frame. All these other kind of effects you can play around with to get your own style. Now this frame, its I'll be honest, it's not the best frame look you might want to go out and actually get some sort of image or png that you find online to create sort of a frame itself but in a pinch it's something that you can play around with now with this one the randomness and the uh, animation is really fast so i'm going to decrease that to something like 0.2 for the stroke randomness And then I'm also going to, again, increase the scale up and down so that it's only showing on the edges, really. And then you can play around with the order of these things, too. Maybe putting the frame underneath the vignette is better and maybe even underneath all of these except for wiggle and flicker so that all the other dust and scratches, everything's applied on top of it. So those are nine ways that you can get a more old style, old film style to your After Effects videos. Remember them, black and white, contrast, adding grain, scratches, dust, vignette, wiggle, flicker, and then adding a frame to them. And actually with this frame, now that I mentioned this, you might not even need the brush stroke. Maybe you just want sort of a frame like this, a complete black frame. Maybe adding something like a blur, something like a Gaussian blur, or let's type in Gaussian to just get a blurred out frame might be something that looks better to you. It's kind of in addition to the vignette, it's a more border that um, frames your image. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it at that. I know this was a long tutorial, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about any of these effects or anything else, make sure you hit me up in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to the channel to get all of our latest After Effects tutorials and other videos that help you become a better creator. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.